Hey, what's up guys? What's going on? It's the here back again with another video. Welcome back to my channel. Today in this video, I'm going to be giving you guys some feedback on the songs that you have sent into my email. And I'm going to be talking to you guys about the creative process when you're a producer. Now I've got songs here that have been sent to me and I thought I'd give feedback and hopefully this will help not just the owners of these songs, but it can also help you as a producer as well to know what's going on with your production and to help you in the production that you're doing. So the first one I have that I listen to, because I already listened to these tracks, so now I'm just giving you feedback because it'll be a long video if I have to listen through these whole songs and give feedback in real time because this is a obviously recorded video. So the first one is this 13th FL Studio beat that I got sent and I feel like it's still too early it's still too early to give feedback on this because your production is still at an infant state where it's still too early to give feedback on. And I've been trying to tell people this, that do not send tracks for feedback when there's no substance in them, when there's nothing to give feedback on. I'm not saying that it's, it's, it's terrible or it's bad, but I'm saying that you're not really saying what you need feedback on. Be specific on what you need feedback on. What what level are you on? What do you struggle with? Is it drums? Is it bass line? Is it arrangement? People just often send me songs and they just say, X, here's my latest song. I need feedback. Feedback on what is my question. And people are on different levels of production. So do yourself a favor. Before you ask for feedback, give yourself time to grow in production. Feedback is not going to help you or just help you escalate into a certain level of production that you weren't on at that moment. So feedback is really not going to help you so much, but it's just going to, you know, give is it's going to it's going to have you get an opinion from someone else about how they look at your stuff. So feedback can come in two ways and it depends with how you take it. That's why I'm 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 not so comfortable giving people feedback because if I am really really honest and I give you my unfiltered opinion, some of you guys will shed tears because I will just be blunt and I will tell you if your music is trash, it's trash. If it's good, it's good, you know, but I feel like it's truth that some people might not be ready for. And people most of the time are always looking for positive feedback, but they don't understand that the game of feedback is not about, you know, just giving you positivity, but it's giving you truth. And sometimes truth is very painful. So that's what I have to say about this first one. I mean, it just says the 13th FL beat, so this is probably your 13th beat you've ever made with FL Studio. And you probably need to make at least 100 or 200 more in FL Studio for you to actually start asking for feedback. And for you to actually have something that a person can listen to and say that, okay, look, I can give you feedback on this. I heard this is awful. I heard this thing is off. But try be specific and try title your stuff when you send it over. It's like when you're sending your songs to radio, sending your songs to be mixed and mastered or whatever. You need to make sure you title your songs nicely. You send notes out. Out on what exactly you need done I always tell this to my clients that I do work for in terms of mixing and mastering I tell them give me notes on what you need me to concentrate on or a bit more info on what your goal is or what your vision is for the project that you have sent to me then the other track I have here is addicted boys uh, is psychologically by addicted boys Cebu when I listen to this track it's it's, it's very good I don't feel like there's anything I could really say is wrong with the song because everything sounds like it's in place. Nothing is out of key. Nothing is out of place. Although the mixing could be better, but obviously this is still work in progress. I'm not sure if these tracks are out or released yet, but from what I heard from this track, you need, you know, to there's instruments that are just kind of standing out too much and that are popping out too hard from this track but overall this track sounds really good and it's titled correctly i can hear you know uh what's going on but as i said you need to let me know exactly what you need feedback on because i don't know what your goal is and i respect everyone's opinion in terms of what they create sometimes they need the drums to, st to stand out more sometimes they need bass to stand out more so now when i'm telling you that your bass is too loud or your drums are too powerful you need to tone them down maybe that was your intention and you will actually be right because as i always say in my videos there is no formula to this whatever you feel is right is probably right we might not agree on opinion but it's probably right then i also have um 
sense of humor from T Man. I've listened to both these tracks, the nascent one, I'm not sure what word that is. But what I feel is DJ T Man doesn't have coherence in his instruments. Like, your structure is good, the instruments that you're picking, the sounds are very good, but you're just not getting the key right in, in most of your songs. The key is, is off. The, the instruments are, are not really connecting in terms of key. And I, I told you guys about key in my videos and I said, use ghost notes. They will help you in getting the right key, no matter what instrument, instrument you're gonna be adding or what sound you're gonna be adding. Use ghost notes to guide you so that you don't you know, uh, go astray in terms of the key and you don't uh, add notes that are out of the key that you're working on. So I feel like DJ T-Man needs to work a lot on his key and make sure that all of his instruments that he's going to be adding are going to be in key so that's what i think is, is is just a missing thing in most of these songs most of the stuff is out of key now this other track by dj Baggio of savannah 2k19 i'm so sorry i'm not going to be able to play this but i will give you my feedback i don't understand the song you sent me because there is some vocals on there that are babes Odumo and mampinja and yeah this guy i mean mampinja's issue is a whole other video i would talk about but you know what it's a sensitive issue i'm not gonna give my comments on it but yeah i want to know what you guys think down in the comments about what's going on with that whole thing if you know about it but anyway i'm not gonna play it here because i don't know whether this is a bootleg of, or remix or what it is but it doesn't sound original because it doesn't have original vocals so it's hard for me to give feedback because you didn't say exactly what you need feedback on and then i've got love story this is a very good track i like it it's 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 really good i like the um, that instrument that bear bear and the keys that sound really good that um that swish sound can you know go lower a bit you always need to look out for these uh, you always need to look out for these um, uplifting effects like SFX. Don't make them too loud. As soon as they go too loud, a person might be enjoying the track, but then when it comes to that, you know, transition to that uplifting sound, and then it goes way loud, it just kind of, you know, uh, knocks a person out of, you know, the, the way they're listening to your track, and they're just like, oh, that sound is too loud. So always watch out for these sounds that are overly loud, especially. Uh, effect so that's the only problem i feel you know and mixing obviously you know but otherwise everything else sounds good in this track then um this one spins in africa after from the hour after hour ep also the effects are a bit too much but overall this is a very good track i was actually jamming to it nicely Everything is in key. Everything is where it needs to be. I like the, the way you structured your, your track. It's, 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 it's very good. It's, it's, it's very good, I must say. You know, if, if you had told me exactly what you needed feedback on, I would be able to say much more to the track because I'm not sure what you were trying to do and already I can see this is on a certain EP so this is probably a done product for you and I would say that it sounds good it's acceptable I can see myself playing this song you know at a big event you know where we, we you know I could be playing a deep house set it's actually a very very um good good jam I, I must say so a uh, good job on that track Spiz in Africa and then Sir Sammy T Another good song as well. I like the keys. I like the build up, the way the instruments just pick up, and, you know, and, and all that. It's just, it's just a thing I, I feel of, of mixing that a lot of people are not really getting across. And mixing is very crucial because it solidifies the relationship of all your, your instruments. And, you know, as a whole, it sounds great. So I feel like sometimes investing in mixing and mastering services will you know will do so much for you more more than you just 
thinking you can do everything or trying to do everything. I mean, if you know that in mixing you are not good, then compose your track, send it to someone that can mix properly. I offer mixing and mastering services at affordable prices and at affordable rates. So contact a person like me, I can make, mix and master for you. So that when you put your music out, you know, uh, on, a, on, a, on a project or an EP or album or whatever, you know that you're putting out the best work out there. This is what professionals do. Just because you see a song come out it doesn't mean that that producer the owner of that project is the one that did the mixing and mastering no usually they give it to engineers that do the final you know product they arrange and they compose and everything that is fine and they do that so my thing with uh, uh um the, the the process of making music and the workflow of making music you must know you must kind of have a routine of how you work like i know for instance i always work like you see in my videos i always work on like four bars if it's like four bars of a track I will work on that four bars and make sure I get an outline of how I want my project to be. As soon as I have that outline of how I want my project to be, then I can move on to doing the, um, the arrangement. After I finish the arrangement, I can move on to adding other things, maybe changing sounds here and there, sounds that I feel like uh, are not really coming across correctly. Because now I have my whole track laid out. All I just need to do is make sure I have the right sounds. Just because you pick a sound right now and it sounds nice right now, doesn't mean that you, you just have to commit to that one sound. You can still change sounds as you go along after you've done arrangement. You can try out audition some other sounds, make a clone of that track, mute the, the original one, and then try change the second one and see if you can get uh, maybe a, a better sound than the one you have, but not actually deleting the first sound that you had. I do this with bass, I do this with pads, I do this with plucks, I do this with even drums to make sure that I you know, I, I give the track as much sounds as I can and I try to figure out if I can get the best sound for that certain part. So that's another way I work. And after I choose my sounds and I know they're good, then I get to the mixing stage where I start to mix all my tracks and all my instruments and make sure that they sound good, they're in the right placements. And then I get to the master where I master and I finalize because now I'm happy with my arrangement, I'm happy with my sound choice and I'm happy with my mix. Now I just have to get to the master. So this is now the creative process that I go through and I think everyone has a different way they work, but you need to have your own routine that you know that every time you're working, this is the certain routine you know that it's, it's you know that you know is going to work. That way you can be consistent, that way you can save time and you can know exactly what you need to do next. So as I was saying, if you know that you need help in mixing and mastering, don't hold yourself back by waiting until you figure out how it works because sometimes ears are different. We hear differently, our ears are different. Some people cannot hear certain frequencies, which means that's gonna be a drawback when you're trying to mix and master. So that might not be the case for you, but mixing and mastering takes ages to understand and ages to learn. You might not have that time. So you cannot wait for, for you to learn mixing and mastering for 10 years and not be releasing anything, you know, releasing anything proper for that fact. So you need to make sure that you can get someone to mix and master for you so long while you're still learning and then you can when you're comfortable enough to release your own masters your own mix and masters you can still do that but so long get someone to mix and master for you that you trust that is easy that understands your sound and knows how to you know uh, make sure that your product comes out nice and you're happy with their work that's what i would advise for you in terms of you know the the the, the working process and the way you can work and your own workflow but it's all up to you you know I, I hope you find this really helpful and i hope this helps you understand that you know the creative process is very crucial and you need to set yourself up properly for you to actually make a good project if you're working on singles and you're fine and you know you're not really looking to release them you just want to try them out it's cool but if you're working on a project that you need to be you know kind of your base solid project and your big and main project then you need to make sure you give it all like i always tell people most of the commercial songs you hear most of the time the producer the one that owns the song that is on the title is not usually the person playing the keys uh playing the bass or actually doing a lot of the the, the you know the instrumentation inside most of these guys they get into these big studios and they gather all these uh, um, instrument players to play the parts for them. They can get a keyboard player, they can get a guitar player, they can get a bass player, 
put them together he will make a skeleton and tell them hey look i'm looking for this sound i want to do this he might make a drum pattern and they will add this add this but he will direct the sound this is basically what a producer does being a producer doesn't necessarily mean you have to do everything no but if you don't have all these people at your disposal you can do everything that is totally fine that is not wrong at all don't you know get me wrong but what i'm saying is try and have a creative process that you know that you can follow consistently and it works do not try to you know go through different ways and confuse yourself in the process because i found myself back in the day where i started making something i end up changing it i end up drifting into another sound and then i forget where i was because now i've lost my creative process and now i'm just going on without you know knowing exactly where i want to go so that's also what I'm not trying to do with this video and it's now going you know for long and I can talk about this for you know for a very long time and there's just something that I feel every producer needs to know so I, I really really hope you find this very helpful and speaking of being helpful if you want to help the channel grow you want to be a part of this community further you want to help the channel you can become a patron of this channel I need your support the channel needs all the support from you guys to be able to keep running because this patreon is for you guys to get much more help when you need it this patreon is for me to help you more personally if you need one-on-one -on -one sessions this is a way that i feel we can do it you can get in contact with me in terms of in the production sense i can give you my feedback personally i can help you and guide you through that because people have been asking me dude why don't you open a music school and stuff like that but i feel like this is the only way i can help and this is the way i can properly help you guys so i hope you guys can join the patreon account i'll put it uh, I'll, I'll put a link in the description where you can find and join the patreon account for this channel so that's it for this video subscribe down below if you're new to the channel i am x and i'm out thanks for watching peace